carpet. One of John's most favorite things to do. He's a spender. And I am a saver. I'm an innovator. Big difference. Entrepreneur. Spender. How do you say that? There's an E U. Entrepreneur. There's an E U R at the end. Entrepreneur. Entre Story time! Repertory table. Ooh, let's not say that. <laughs> <laughs> let's not say that at all. That sounded a little weird. Right? It's concrete equipment, folks. Nope. Get nope. your mind out of the gutter. So we are, we're, we're bringing you this story time to teach you a lesson. And it's all about the dichotomy of being the frugal. The pocket penetrometer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you were going to go. Being frugal. Right. And, um, but still knowing when to grow your business and when you need to get equipment for efficiency and to be able to expand you know, what you're able to do. Right. Um, three stories. First one. So before we get into the story, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that little bell. Um, we had just uh, started the company. Well, we, we, we were like a year and a half in, mm. two years. Yeah, because we Was already had the compression machine. And that was a year in. Mm, that's true. So we we're probably a year and a half, two years. Year and a half, two years in, just started getting our feet under us. Right. Uh, got some good clients. Right. Uh, I would say a few clients at that point. Right. Who were having us do mixed design. So we had the mixer. We had mm -hmm. two mixers at the time. Right. Uh, a really bad Kushlin mixer. A nice Hobart mixer. Right. A great compression pressure machine, which we still have. And we were making a lot of samples. Right. We were making a lot of samples at one time. We were. A lot of samples. He's trying to like sell this. He's trying to sell it to so, still. After eight years, he's trying to sell it. We had to do these specific cubed samples um, for light reflectivity tests. Um, and then for, uh, what's it called? Uh, settling tests mm -hmm. to see the bleed rate of certain right. acrylics. So setting up these samples by themselves, like each one individually, and at a time I was doing, you know, these little two by, they were like the two by two samples, right. but I was doing like 30 or 40 of them at a time. So doing the method, the, you know, the eight, then you switch it, then the right. eight, then you switch it, it took a, like 30 seconds per sample or somewhere around there. Sure. And you multiply that by 30 or 40 samples, you're starting to get into the set time of the material, which now you're not making the same samples when you started. So vibratory table, brought to you by the vibratory table. Ding, ding. So he was like, we must have this. We need this piece of equipment. We cannot go on without it. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. I use it as a step stool occasionally because I'm sure. This is why we were pregnant, or not pregnant, but yeah. had Sammy Jane. We had Sammy. So still living with mom and dad. Still living with, yep, still living with his folks. I'm working other jobs. Whitney's working other jobs to make rent meet or ends meet with rent and right. saving money and um, just had to have it had to have it convinced Whitney like, and that was I think it was like 2700 without tax and shipping I actually have a picture of me sitting on it with two thumbs up like the box sure. the wooden box that came in in the garage right. ding ding so it was probably like 4500 or excuse me 3500 with, with shipping, shipping and tax and because dude Freaking by, is expensive, man. Then we had to hire an electrician to wire it. Right. But I ended up doing it on my own, which I don't trust myself with electrical work, but we just didn't have any more money. We have, I figured we would have had Tom do that. No. 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 Was no. Okay. So, um, two days after we bought it, guess what happened, Patchouli? I realized... We did not freaking need it. Story number one, end. We'll wrap it up with a nice Even part. now, he's like, we really didn't need this. It's handy. Uh, 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 uh. Now we use it. We've used it. I, what I did was every single job we had after, we, after we I had that realization, it. I was like, I am forcing the contract to use it. And we got some good use out of it. Right. But there was another way of doing that. We didn't, definitely nice. did not have to buy that brand new. Okay. And that was my point. Yeah, okay. Story number two, this is all about spending money. And 
by story number two, which was seven years later, or, or five years later, six years later, right. while we might have spent $2,700 on this, or $3,500, it wasn't just spending the money and learning how to use a piece of equipment, or, or not lose money on a piece right. of equipment, it was also about spending money so you're working smarter with it oh, rather than harder with absolutely. it. Absolutely. So um, we were doing some uh, mixes mm -hmm. uh, for our clients where uh, we were somewhere in between a five quart mix or two right. quart mix and a one cubic foot mix. Uh, wasn't small enough to do in the five the quart mixer. Was too big, yep. Aggregate was too big and it disappeared in the 2.77 cubic foot mixer, right? Oh, in the Northern Tool one. Yeah, because we didn't have this one yet. No, no, we did have this no, one. We got the we got the first bucket mixer before we got that one. The big blue. The blue one. Big blue. First bucket mixer came first. I feel like it did. Maybe no, it did. no, no. It okay. totally did. Totally, totally did. Um, because we used the bucket mixer on that SCC job, and at that point we had mm -hmm. big blue. Okay. So. We looked at a five gallon bucket mixer. That was pricey. Was not cheap. And it was, we're about to start this huge project um, and, and we needed something oh, in the, between. Oh, the five gallon one wasn't terrible. It's the bigger ones that get more expensive. Well, but it's still. It's still it was, I think it was like a, a thousand or twelve hundred. Okay, you know? but now we're saying it's a thousand, twelve hundred. If we compare it to the same amount of money back then. Well, sure, it hurt, yeah. It hurt. Yeah. now. The decision that we made to get it, we did not make it as lightly as we made the decision to get this. Put a lot of time into it, looked up the yep. versions that we yep. were going to get. We actually did some modifications to it right. to get it to the point where we could do a variable speed on a low and a high. Right. So that changed up not only the motor, but the belt drive. Right. So a lot of money, somewhere right. about 2500 was definitely put back into yeah, it with the time. Steve and everything. Right. right. So there was a lot of time put into it, that being said. Oh, it's been great. Well worth, well worth the money. And yeah, I mean, and now we've got a big, kind of a large, like a 20 quart Hobart, but before we had that, we were able to do larger grout mixes right. in there. So it just- well, With the Hobart, we still can't do those larger aggregate mixes. We can't do the larger but aggregate, we still but we can do the larger grout mixes. Right, 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 right totally. But no, the great thing with the five gallon bucket mixer, it's very versatile. You can do grout mixes, you can do, what, up to three quarter inch right. aggregate. So, I mean, it's just, and it's just so easy. And if you're feeling lazy, you just toss that stinking bucket. Right. And right. clean the blade. I mean, oh. cleanup is a freaking breeze. Dream. So, and now Walmart has like $3 buckets. Freaking awesome. I love Walmart. So. Unfortunately, they don't work in the five gallon bucket mix. You've got to get the orange Oh, ones. really? Yeah, For Home yeah, Depot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, it goes too yeah. narrow. Oh, okay. too narrow. Yeah. So, the impetus of both of those stories is that we spent a certain amount of money uh, when we originally started with the vibratory table. The efficiency on that money wasn't great. We didn't really do that long term look right. on the money that we were spending. Right. It had to force right. the use. With the bucket mixer, it fit into the critical path of what we do oh, sure. with no issues. Well, and I, think was, that's, I think that's the big thing too to look at. And I mean, so we got a really big, what, how big is that? Nine cubic feet? Yeah. We got a nine cubic foot mixer and, and we didn't for a long time. We kept renting that. Right, to make sure we got the one we wanted. To make wanted. sure we got the one we wanted. But also like initially when we started running like a larger scale test, we didn't know how frequently we were gonna yeah. do it. And by the time we got to the third one, it's like, all right, let's just buy the stinking well, mixer already. But yeah, I mean, you've got to see, okay, is this is this something I can rent or borrow or buy a cheap version? How many times am I going to use it? I mean, you've got to figure out the best use for your dollar, the best efficiency for your dollar with what you're spending. And then the other thing that we always have to point out is that there is a risk. Oh, sure. That's why we rarely buy things on credit. So, uh, so oh, sure. we, we buy things in cash so that if there is a risk and there is a loss, it's not a loss over a long period of oh, time. Absolutely. Like we're not paying credit or percentages right. on our loss. Yeah, that's one of our one of our really big things. And from the very beginning, we were like, okay, we're not buying stuff until we, we can pay for it because we didn't ever want to have that. The di you know, even even the, the lab, like we saved until we could just pay for it in cash because we didn't want to right. ever have to deal with that so 
Remember what we were told we were going to fail unless we got a $350,000 alarm? We're going to fail by the that. end of next week. The point of bringing up that story is that there's a certain amount of risk that you have to take sure. when spending money. Three, patchouli, how long ago was it when we originally started talking about this? A year and a half ago. Was it really? Patchouli and I, and we wow. should have saved that piece of flipping construction paper because it had the original uh, membership or the follower counts on all of our social media platforms. Was it really when you very first started working for us that we, we went into we social media? A month and a half later. Wow. Yeah. We started talking about YouTube and everything. He brought me down here. Right, okay. So it was a year and a half before that, maybe a little bit more, that I started reading up on social media and creating platforms. And to this very day, I admit I, I'm not the best at getting uh, technical equipment no. okay. to communicate the message, and that's why I really oh, yes. the truly yeah. sure. When I started Cameras this, and whatever, and I yeah. had to do a lot of research and information gathering, and it took me a year and a half to get to a certain point where I was comfortable talking to somebody like Patruly, so I had my own education, right. and then when I did, she kind of, you know, accelerated my educational path, my critical path sure. to where we are today and it was a lot of trial by fire but one of the things that Petruli and I discussed early on and this is where I'm getting to the relevancy of this mm -hmm. is that we needed to have fun and not create but document a story. We approached Whitney and I was sold. This is what I wanted to do, this is the way I saw our business right. going as well as our clients. This is why I saw the industry going. You say that now but I remember when you Patchouli, can you come over here, please? So, we went to Whitney and said, hey, can we have a budget to start this social media right. venture? And Whitney said, um, how much are you asking for? <laughs> yeah, I heard that is no. <laughs> so, we ended up convincing her to give us a $200 a month budget. Right. And that included Patchouli's time as well as advertisements, mm -hmm. which is... French for advertisements. Yes. Don't know if you guys knew that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry to say I love you, and you're blushing right now. Whitney had zero faith. The risk well, yes. that we were taking, and it wasn't a lot, $200 a month. But it's $200 a month or $2,400 a year that could have gone to something else. Sure. There was a lot of risk in the beginning, and Whitney actually said to me, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but I feel like this is a waste of your time. You have so much more. It was upstairs. You were upset at me because I was playing on the computer or something to that effect on Instagram mm -hmm. and, and LinkedIn. <clears throat> and it was three months into that venture that we not only got our money back and then some. Sure. Right? Absolutely. I mean, it just took off within 90 days. Yeah. That fast. Just actively started. So, but. The risk that was involved. Oh yeah, it was it was more of a time thing than a still money. Oh sure. Yeah. Now we're gonna do a podcast. Uh, Patchouli will put a link below. Thanks for joining us today. It's been fun. We really do enjoy putting these things together for you. We hope you're getting something out of them. Throw some comments, concerns in the bottom. Don't forget, we're the concrete experts. Not only isn't that concrete formulation, but it's also getting your message out on the digital um, platforms. Platforms. Any yeah. platforms. Really I was trying to say something smarter, like Tron, but the digital cornucopia, the wow. menagerie, if you will. Wow, you're just really going just for this. Just so reaching out. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Have an awesome one. Go concrete. Beat asphalt.